Kuzu Zangpola, my name is Thai. I take great pride in introducing to you our incredible guests we have for you today. We've seen her on many shows and programs over the years and today we get to know a little bit more about her. So help me in welcoming Dupto Zangmo. Thank you so much Dupto for being here. Thank you, welcome. <laughs> uh, okay, la, so let's get uh, straight to the point la, uh, and start right from the beginning. Uh, where are you from la, and how many siblings did you have and how was your family life? La, uh, I'm from Tsangkala, which is in Tashiyangzi, mm -hmm. right eastern side. And I have two daughters uh, before my marriage life. Uh, just to say about my own family, mm. I had one elder brother and an elder sister. Um, my mother expert when I was in class 8 and my father is still living. Plus. My brother expert when I was in Sherab the second year. Plus. And then my sister is running a small shop in San Kalaunila. And uh, where did you uh, study? La? What kind of uh, schooling did you have? La? Uh, I began my primary education in Kaling, which is now known as uh, Minsling Institute Kaling, MIK. But before it was known as Sangli Minsling School for the Blind. Till class uh, 6, I was there in Kaling Minsling School. From 7 to 10, uh, I was in Jigme Sherabling. And then I continued till 12 there. And then from 12, I joined Sherabzi and did my being in for three years. Plus, that's uh, an incredible uh, journey la, because uh, this is uh, not in the year 2000s, it was in the 1980s. Uh, you were the first graduate, Mola. Yeah, I was the first uh, female graduate from Sherabzi. And um, I wanted to ask you, la, how did this, uh, I don't think it was very common for a person with disability at that time to actually study and go to do a BA in Sharapsi. Uh, how did that happen for you? La? Let's try to go back la, <laughs> when you were a little girl and uh, you had this uh, disability and who told you la, that you could go and study and how did that happen for you? La? Before I joined in Sherabzi, yes. uh, Pema Chugil, who is uh, a program officer in uh, special education here in education division, mm. he was the one to join the uh, college. Mm. He passed out and we had a long gap between us. Mm. Uh, after I um, uh, passed out from class 12 in the 2002, mm. uh, during that time I came here in the winter mm. and I happened to meet with our Honorable Lempo, Lempo Sangi Ngitubla. He in, encouraged me to join, uh, join and continue my study in mm. Sherabsa College. La. Before that, I didn't have any plan to join because, uh, as uh, you said, being a disabled, we have to face many challenges. Mm. We have to go through many hardships. Mm. And the main problem was with our learning materials, mm. which was not in Braille. So yes. that was the problem. And considering that problem, I didn't have um, much hope to uh, uh, go to uh, de uh, degree la, uh, yes. to college, yes. but then as Limpo encouraged me, mm. uh, I decided to join Sherabsi College in, in 2003 till 2005. I managed to do my degree. La. Plus, plus that's, that's very incredible. But how was it, la, the books? Uh, was it in Braille? La? How, how did you manage? La? Uh, uh, first time when I went to Sherabsi, there was not a single sheet of paper in Braille. <laughs> and then for one month, I had a nightmare, mm -hmm. thinking that how can I complete my degree. Mm. After one month, I decided that uh, I should uh, um, have my own solution. And then mm. I requested my lecturers to record, or do audio recording like novels, short stories. No. And then they uh, looked for provision saying that they will get a permission from the publisher mm. and then they will try to request for the audio books. Yes. But that was not done, mm. that we couldn't do that. Mm. And then I uh, again requested my friends and the even lecturers to uh, arrange timing and then do recording for me. Mm. And then some of my friends, they volunteered, uh, those who were uh, good in reading. Mm. They volunteered for me and they did uh, three short stories, uh, audio recording. Yes. And after that, 
and uh, when I browse Google, I got the summary for almost all the novels. Mm -hmm. I tried to write, but then the least pages I could write was about 70 pages. <laughs> and that, <laughs> that was beyond, beyond my uh, m managing time. Then yes. there I thought, no, I uh, cannot do this. Mm -hmm. And then again, I requested my department, HOD head of department, Sir Ugen Dendu, mm -hmm. who, who is still, uh, who is not here. He passed away, That's and he he was one of the moral supporter for me, and he requested uh, teachers in Kaling to transcribe some books f uh, in Braille. Mm -hmm. They did for for me, and then uh, maximum I transcribed myself, and then some I uh, requested lecturers and my friends to record for me, and that that three ways helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. And then m most of my leisure time was spent in writing and transcribing books. Lasla. And uh, were you, in that year in Kanglung, uh, in, in Sharapsi, were you the only one uh, with a disability? Was it a class full of uh, persons without disability? I was the only one who was uh, disabled among Plus. the able uh, persons. Plus. And then uh, what I did was, when I went to class, I took a small, uh, what to say, the workman. Mm. And then <laughs> when the lecturer started to lecture, mm. I used to record. Plus. And then... After my class classes, evening time, I used to listen and then write. Yes. But that was also very tough for me. Mm. And then I could do only little. Yes. And then during the free times and during the weekends, I used to request my friends and they used to discuss among themselves like uh, four friends will do today, two friends will do tomorrow. So mm. they adjusted the hours for me and yes. they used to dictate. Plus, so uh, quite supportive classmates and friends, Mola. Yes. Plus, um, what would you say was, uh, did you face any kind of discrimination? Did you face any kind of challenge, la, personal challenge while you were in Sharapsila? Because you were a young girl at that time. Uh, you must have wanted to, I, I don't know, you must have wanted to go out, hang out with friends, uh, get dressed up. And did you feel like you missed out on some college life aspects? La? Uh, I should say somewhere I uh, did miss out because mm. Uh, during weekends, as you know that all our friends uh, go out, mm. they celebrate their birthday, they go for dinner, they hang out with their boyfriends and all. Mm. And my mm -hmm. uh, present husband, Plus. he was here in Thimpu only, Plus. and I didn't have my boyfriend. Plus. So during Saturday evening, I was the only one in the hostel. <laughs> Everyone went out. Plus. So that time I felt lonely, mm. I felt left out because uh, if I were low vision, uh, I could walk without a guide. Plus. So that time I, I used to feel I was left out and I was discriminated or I was uh, hopeless because I was mm -hmm. uh, visually impaired. Less, uh, less. And uh, you started talking about your husband now. So where did you meet your husband? La? Uh, we met here only, La Tipun. Less. And how did it happen, La, your love story? Is he also a person with disability? La? Let's get the I know, but for our audience, uh, is he also a person with disability? And how did it start, La, your love story? Uh, he is uh, not a disabled uh, person. Less. He is just like you all, able. Uh, and then I should say I, I was lucky enough to have him because Less. my family, I have only one sister and my father was away from us and he is uh, uh, with um, our adopted, no, the stepmother. Less. And they have their own family. So they, uh, my father ha have actually doesn't have time for me. And Less. then the first worry what I had was after my graduation, who will take care of me when I come to Thimphu? Who mm. will guide me when I go to seek job? And mm. that was the biggest worry. Mm. But that problem was solved before me because my husband, we met, uh, we met in 2002 winter yes. when I was just here after my, I was passed off from class 12. Yes. And then we were good friends. Yes. And then one moral support I got from uh, from him only. Mm -hmm. uh, Honorable Lempo, he told me you should continue your study. Less. But back in my mind, I uh, didn't have a strong hope that I can complete my graduate. But after I knew my husband, he said, "Yes, you can. Although I am a, a simple civil servant, I can support you. I can help you." That was the moral support given to me. And then through uh, these words, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I went to Sharapsi and he supported me. He uh, took care of me and then this, this time I'm here because of him. I last, last, last. It's so nice to hear. La. So when you graduated from Sharapsi, he must have been very excited too. La. How was that day la, when you graduated? Because like you said, you didn't have too much hope. You thought you might not graduate. So when you finally did graduate, what did you, how did you all celebrate? La? Do you all remember? La? Yes, sir. Uh, it was, uh, I think, 2005, December. It was very cold. Mm. Usually, <laughs> Sharapsi gets very cold, chilly cold in uh, midnight. But that day, we didn't feel cold. We were uh, just walking outside. And then just us uh, sharing my three years experience to him. And then he said, yes, today is the day that you should remember, you should celebrate, and you should feel pride of yourself. Then I told him, no, it's not only my effort. It's your support that I'm here today. And then he came to uh, uh, Sharapsi. Mm -hmm. And then we stayed for. Uh, two nights uh, in Sharapsi only. After that, we went to uh, Tashiyangsi to meet my father. And before that, I didn't uh, inform my father that I'm coming with him. <laughs> I took him surprisingly. And then that was the, the, the evening that my father really got shocked. Mm. And then I introduced him to my father. Mm. And then we uh, decided that we'll have a, a MC. Mm. And then my father and my sister, everyone, they were happy that I have at least someone to take care of me. And then what did you do after that, La? I passed out in 2005, mm. and then I came straight away here in Thimpu. Mm. And I almost rested for uh, four months. Mm. Uh, during that time, I met with our uh, actor, Ngidup Doji, our Ngidup Doji. Mm. If I just remember, it was a Jigdel Entertainment. La. Oh, and then, uh, I just uh, uh, worked as a, a singer or enter entertainer. I worked there for two months part-time, mm -hmm. and then after that, I joined straight away to Rapa. Uh, the job that I, I am having today is all, uh, uh, the credibility all goes to Her Majesty, the mother, Aji Sangi Chudin Wangchula. Her Majesty, the Queen Ajit Sangi Chodin Wangchu visited our uh, college in the year 2004. Nice. That time, I was uh, one of the members in Culture Club. Nice. We had the performance and then after the performance, Ajit told me, uh, what can I do for you, Anabe mm -hmm. nice. So that time, mm -hmm. suddenly I had uh, answers in there. After my graduation, I have to appear for RCC and to compete with the normal friends. Mm. That, uh, so that is the biggest challenge for us, and I don't think I can uh, mm. compete fully. So mm. what is your interest? Mm. She asked me, and I said, my interest is to uh, sing, and then if I get uh, to work in one of the offices. Mm. So she said, Maybe you can join Rapa because you can do two things. Firstly, you can teach, and yes. secondly, you can sing and mm. uh, perform. And then uh, again, you can uh, help in making programs, VIP programs. Yes. So that was the promise that Aji uh, gave to me. Yes. And then right after my graduation, yes. I went to uh, NCWC mm. to just get an appointment to meet Aji mm. at that, uh, that time. Madam Tsundoko was there, mm -hmm. and she uh, just informed Aji, and then Aji, uh, we had uh, the appointment, mm -hmm. and Aji then instructed Madam Tsundoko to put an application to RCC. Yes. So that was the procedure, actual procedure, mm -hmm. and on uh, June 15, my appointment order was out now from yes. RCC, and then straight away. Without any interview, I went to uh, Rapa as an English instructor. With your own background and your own lived experience, Mola, uh, what would you say is the most challenging part for being a person with disability that to a woman in Bhutan? Uh, being a person with disability and being a woman with disability, mm. I, I should say one thing is while traveling. Mm. Traveling is the most challenging uh, thing because without a guide, we Bhutan is still insecure to travel. 
Mm. And then what I do is, as a mother or as a woman, I have experienced a lot. And then the first thing after I get into taxi, I always ask a number, for a taxi number and mm. the driver's contact number. Nice. But I never trust the uh, driver's number because uh, they may tell a lie or sometimes yes. that may be not be the contact number. Yes. So I always ask for uh, taxi number, mm. vehicle yes. number. And then mm. what I always be uh, careful is when, when we trouble in taxi, mm. I frequently ask where did we reach. Less. And then sometimes uh, we can sense that we have reached Lungten Zampa because we have uh, the bridge and the water sound coming and we are uh, traveling uh, from the, uh, not from the bridge but the, under the bridge. Mola, under the so that is one thing that we can sense. Less. And then one thing is mm -hmm. when we travel, we always uh, sense the bumper, the car less. bumpers and oh, all. Less. So we know like when we reach Chunzom, and when we, uh, after reaching Chunzom, we if we have to go to Paro, we have a uh, bumper and then, then they turn. Less. So that is something that uh, we mm. sense. Less. And then uh, being a woman, mm. another challenge is to manage house. Mm. Because um, for most of the time, we should be with our family, with our child at home. Mm. We should manage our house, go for shopping. And then <laughs> men uh, do everything household works more. Yes. And then it's not go good to depend on husband all the time because mm. sometimes they are uh, burdened with their works. Mm. And then when we uh, when they uh, reach home, mm. they are almost exhausted. Mm. So uh, it's not good to fully depend on husband. Mm -mm. That's why I always try my best to do my, do on my own teach. Uh, the daily living skills even to my child and then sometimes I also learn from my uh, two daughters because they teach me and then simple things uh, uh, they teach me and then I can learn from them. Lasla, uh, since you mentioned your daughters, la, I know but for the audience, uh, your daughters, are they also persons with disability la, and uh, if, it, if they are, yes or no and uh, what do you f hope for their future? La? Uh, my two daughters, they are not disabled. Last they are la. just like you all. Last and uh, I, for future, mm. uh, just now, I don't have anything uh, as such to give to them. But only what I trust is the education. Mm. Uh, I'm giving them education. Mm. I want to educate them uh, till the master's level only. Last and then they will uh, continue their own journey of life. But I don't know what fate has decided for them, mm. but their aim is my younger sister, uh, younger daughter. Mm. She wants to be a police, mm. and then my elder daughter. She says she wants to be a doctor. <laughs> Last la, I hope their dreams come true la. Mm. You were saying that your daughters teach you some things also, yes. so I wanted to find out what is it that your, your daughters teach you la. Uh, my elder daughter one time yes. uh, when I was just pouring a water. Uh, from the uh, um, bottle to another bottle, mm. uh, uh, there was a, I, I didn't know that there was a gap between two bottles. <laughs> and then she said, Mother, can you feel the bottle? Mm. Feel here, you hold the bottle uh, with le the left hand, mm. and then hold another bottle of water with the right hand, and then uh, feel with your finger whether the, there is a gap or not. Mm. And that, that simple thing was very, mm. uh, I think, the uh, what to say, it's a very helpful technique for me. Less. Being a disabled, I know we learn with feelings, we learn mm. with hearing, or we, we have to have extra sense. But that time, mm. I felt I have uh, lost my sense, mm -hmm. completely lost my sense. Mm. I didn't have the uh, idea to uh, just feel with my finger and then pour the water. Less. If I would have done with uh, uh, that technique, mm. I wouldn't have spilled the water. <laughs> So she's teaching you at such a young age already more. La. Yes. La. Uh, who has been who has been your biggest cheerleader, biggest supporter throughout all la, all of this? Who has been your biggest cheerleader? La? Uh, I should say uh, uh, when I was a young girl, it was my parents only la, because mm. my parents never used to keep me alone or never used to back up and then mm. just uh, said, uh, share to the people that uh, my child is disabled, she or he 
I, I cannot do this or that. Mm -hmm. My parents always used to bring me in the front, mm -hmm. take me wherever they used to go, mm -hmm. and then they, uh, my parents used to teach good uh, values that made yes. me stronger. But after I joined my mm -hmm. service or in the college, uh, I should say my husband was a strong uh, supporter. Yes. And then still today, sometimes when work doesn't uh, go according to our according to my plan mm. i feel upset mm. i feel hopeless and i will share no disabled person cannot be equal to the able person and then mm -hmm. when i say this my husband said no you you shouldn't think like that mm. you have your own way mm. you have your own technique you have your own life carry out you can always do so yes. this is the moral support he gives to me and then mm. i always say that um, he was the one who made my life uh, uh, better yes. and then today uh, uh, including my two daughters four of us being a small family we are okay in, uh, and then we are happy la. Yes, la. Um, you're talking about your mother so uh, do you what do you remember about your mother what kind of woman was your mother la? my mother was a talkative woman <laughs> he she was hardworking mm. and uh, to be frank she was just like the men, like he, she used to wear go. She she used to go to field wearing go and work. Like. Oh, nice. So that was then. Then if my mother were here today, like, mm. I th I think I wouldn't uh, have suffered anything. I wouldn't have any worries about my uh, two daughters. She would have done everything for me. She would have looked for everything. Nice, la. But I think you've still done really, really well. La. I'm so. Uh, in awe of what you've accomplished, like even though you've had some support, but still, ultimately it comes down to you, la, and then you for you to have managed so well. Uh, I'm so in awe of you, la. When I was in growing age, uh, after my mother expired, mm. my father was a bit weak, yes. and he one time decided to go as a monk yes. because of our family problem, yes. and then uh, my sister dropped her uh, schooling and. I, as I said, she, she was at home and he, she's still in the village. Mm. At that time, I was in class 10. Mm. And then uh, I was just in the stage of giving up my studies. Mm. But one time I asked myself and thought, no, I shouldn't give up my studies because if education is not there, how can a disabled woman or a person stand on his or her, her own feet? Mm. That was the strong uh, decision that I sh uh, could take and I have taken, I feel, that. because at this stage uh, in this society, if we are not educated, or if we can't stand on our own feet, uh, to be frank, it's very difficult to fit in the society and firstly get employed and be on our own. Yes. And if we are not strong, if we, are, if we cannot stand on our own feet, even our families, relatives uh, cannot look after us or will not look after us because mm. they have their own business, they have mm. their own life, then they, uh, they can't help. No. Yes. So what I feel is education is the lifeblood of every disabled people. Mm. And then some parents have the notion saying that, no, our child, they, they are so discriminated or they are so, they are suffering. Uh, that we can't take he, him or her to the school. Mm. That, that notion should be just uh, taken away because mm. although we suffer a lot mm. uh, when, when we are young, mm. but the fruits come later mm. and then we enjoy and we can uh, be strong and stand on our own feet. Um, and what about your future plans? Like, what future plans do you have like, now? As a disabled woman, mm. now we have uh, entered the age, early 30s. Mm. So it's, I think it's the midst of our age, mm. then service age. And then I think uh, I'm just planning, I, sh I should continue my master's. Uh, yes. in then mm. uh, I should help my two daughters to get uh, their best education yes. and then uh, get them settled so that the later they will not suffer and will have not no more worries. What advice or message do you have for a young girl somewhere who with a uh, with a disability who 
perhaps things there is no hope for her what would you like to say to her la uh, i always uh, share or i always tell to my disabled especially the disabled women or the disabled young girls la never give up la never give up uh, use the talent that you have mm -hmm. and then if opportunities uh, knock your door la, mm -hmm. always try to uh, uh, grab the opportunity use fully utilize fully and then get the skills to promote your uh, talent mm. and then always uh, share your problems openly mm. so that the people in the society they will know and then people will have some ways to help la, yes. so that our, our future becomes better why i say is that uh, in 2014 when i traveled to penang malaysia i was pregnant and i had a second daughter Six yes. months plus, la. Mm -hmm. and then uh, that time it was my first time traveling in, in uh, outside, la. Mm -hmm. and then I had worries in my mind. But then somewhere I felt that well, uh, if we have the documents ready, I think the work, uh, the trip will be fine. And mm -hmm. then that dream came true because uh, I asked the help desk to help me, and while booking, I just uh, told them I'm a disabled person I need help assistance yes. so with that and and the, with all the documents ready I was uh, I went to Penang attended my intermediate ICT course in Penang and after two weeks I came back so yes. that two weeks was a mm, new experience experience for me mm. and then and from that I felt that we can do if we are uh, courageous and if uh, if we have the positive mind the things become positive Lasla, thank you so much la thank you so much for being here with us thank you for the special time that you've given us My favorite book is Pre Preparing for Death by Tenzin Pelmon. Favorite person is my mother. Favorite pastime is to listen to songs, sad, sad songs. Because uh, as a disabled, we feel, uh, mostly feel emotional, so that time we, uh, the songs just drive our emotions. A favorite thing about myself, as I should say, I can speak uh, in the crowd without preparing. As a woman, we have uh, many, uh, many things to uh, uh, do, makeups and all. So, uh, compared to men, m women have better ways to look more prettier or younger. <laughs> Someone who speaks fact about me. When someone uh, is with us only, sometimes as a disabled, we do not know what is happening. But they look to each other and they talk with the sign language about us, just like the mock mockery. So that makes me annoyed. I always always speak uh, what I think. Uh, I, uh, in the gathering, I feel uh, I shouldn't eat doma, but suddenly I have eaten the doma, and then the doma spit uh, is on my ego. That makes me feel bad. Would you rather go without shampoo for the rest of your life or toothpaste for the rest of your life? Uh, shampoo, because uh, in our school days, we seldom use shampoo while washing heat, just we used to use uh, soap. Would you rather be physically stronger than anyone or be able to fly? Physically strong. Would you rather only be able to whisper or only be able to shout? Only be able to shout. Would you rather have a magic spell that takes away any disability from the world 
or create a perfect inclusive society? Uh, create a perfect inclusive society. Because uh, inclusive means everyone is included in the society, even the disabled voice are heard. Thank you guys for watching. Do remember you're strong, you're smart, you're beautiful and your story needs to be heard. Take care.